Hello, the game has started. It's my opponent to go first. I've got a non-bingo Iraq, but I've got some good scoring tiles in the H and the Y. Great new opening rack bingo from opponent. Now, just checking that I don't have an 8 with these floaters. I've got E-Y-E -E as a component part of a word. And 8, E-I-G-H-T. But I'm not seeing a bingo here. So, how to sort the rack out. No two-letter V plays, so I can't do anything about the double-double lane in column 5 if I play to the right, which I'm minded to do with hay. Not a great rack leave, 28 points. Can I do any better? My G could also go above the I. No, I think this is the best I can do. My G does go in front of HI, which is something. I am going with this. Wow, pretty much all vowels. Pretty grim. But OG would sort the rack out nicely. And although the rack leave of AET is vowel heavy, it's a very nice vowel heavy set. A and E are good bingoy tiles. Wow, good score for opponent. So is there anywhere for OG? Hey only takes an S. Well, I don't think there is. Well, there is. Interesting. What about doing this? Providing a massive X spot. OG takes a Y in front. But this does sort the rack out in one. And one Y's been played. This is 13, which is not very much. Do I have anything through the B? I have begot, but that's keeping three vowels. And there's a Big difference between three vowels and two vowels and a consonant. Vago keeps a double E T and doesn't score very much more. E10 is good. So I have etage. Let me see what that looks like. 16 points. I don't think this rack leave is as good as EAT, and I'm still providing big scoring spots. So I am going back to OG 413. And well, I have a good scoring tile in the Z. This is a balanced rack. Not bingoey. Zellatrice with I and R. But they would need to be together. Wow, 37 for opponent. So I'm already nearly a bingo behind. I don't have an O for going underneath beg. So no big Z spots. I have big A's. Let me see what this looks like. 36 points is good. Rack leave is good. Opponent does have an easy scoring spot in column five, but I think the 36 points for big A's is better than I can get elsewhere. Is that correct? Do I have anything beginning with E? Don't think I do. I have C's on my rack, but I'm not seeing anywhere for it. Yeah, I am going with this. And I have the Y for Yogi. Fantastic. So, what do I have? Do I have a six letter play beginning with C? Wow. Just thinking about cootie. Can that be spelt E-Y? No, it can't. Wishful thinking. I could have a, a bingo with this rack, so I mustn't rush to play a short Y word. Not seeing a seven. Could there be an eight? Well, through a G, I may have Cetology. Not sure about that. Very few floaters on this board. 
I'm just wondering if Cooley is still good or whether that's been removed as one of the slurs. Ah, but the slurs have not been removed from ISC, so possibly Cooley in column one, keeping ET. And if opponent blocks that spot, possibly by playing a two-letter word, then I can get value from the Z with the O. So I would have Y-O, which is quite a nice play. Over 30 points. Oh, wow, fantastic bingo for opponent. And I now have a few floaters to consider. Quite bingo-y ones. So how about an S? And I have the L-Y ending. Does this make a bingo with an S? Wow, it feels jolly close to one but I'm not seeing it. How about a D? I would have the ED ending. No, A doesn't look likely with all the vowels on my rack. Same with E and L. Do I have any plays, four-letter plays beginning with Y? All of my vowels can go in front of D and S, but I'm not seeing one. So, ooh, sight is good. That's only a six. Just slightly nagging in my mind that there could be a seven here or an eight. Now the Z hasn't been used. Wow. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking of. Cooley for 39. Wow, this looks pretty good. I have retinol. So therefore I have retinols in column 14. The gaze takes a D and an S. Do I have anything with these floaters? Row K is a double double row. So this rack plus an A, massively high probability. Okay, opponent takes out my retinol spot. I've got some pretty useful two-letter sets to consider, and the D, but what about this A? Aileron plus a T is Tayleron, and Git is good, so I do have a bingo, Tayleron. I don't think Tayleron has an anagram, or does it? Tayleron. Not seeing it. Okay, but that is that is at least a bingo. What about column 15? This rack plus a D. No, not seeing it. H A would be a double double. This rack plus A and H. Not seeing anything. Is there anywhere else for retinol or anywhere I haven't considered for retinol? C only takes an H. Tender takes an S. LE not good. So no retinol spots. Not seeing anything with the Z. Ah, what about the E? This rack plus an E. E. Wow, so high probability. Gosh, there could be, there could be a bingo there. Well, I do have one and the score is going to be similar to anything through the E, so Taylor on for 70. Not bad for seven random tiles. C and K have some synergy. I don't think there's a bingo here. I have Reiki down from the R, which would sort the rack out nicely. My K can go underneath AS and get doubled. So I could play just K, I and ask for over 30 points. 
Now, ED, that may have been useful last turn. Not sure I considered that. And I think that's partly because a column 13 bingo ending in ED wouldn't have been better than Taylor on and may have been worse. So, am I going to play KI? Oh, wow, is that back-to-back -back bingos for opponent? It's not, but look at this. He played D-Leds, followed by a 50-point head play, and now pig out. So, wow. Top scoring from opponent, and I trail by over 100. And opponent's created a triple-triple nine-time Elaine. But I don't have one. I do have Picker. I have Pokia for 42 points. And yeah, KI for 33, only nine fewer points, keeping CI plus EOR. Quite bingo y, but I'm taking out a hottish spot for opponent. Yeah, I am going with this. Wow! Now it's my turn to draw well. I could well have a bingo here. And, oh wow, another bingo for opponent. Gosh, so I'm 140 points behind. 23 tiles in the bag, including a blank. But do I have a bingo? Where would it play? Begazes is good, so do I have a seven here? Wow. These tiles are just so bingo -y that they look like there's a bingo, even when there might not be one. Or I could be missing, missing one, but am I? I don't think Sinopic is good. I think it's just Sinopia. Ponzi's not good. So what about the floaters in pig outs? What about the G? I would have the ING ending. No. How about the O? Not seeing anything. How am I doing for time? 10 minutes on my clock. Wow, opponents established this massive lead and only used three minutes of time. How about the floating E? No. Are there any two letter sets to consider? I think all of the ones around head are obstructed by mutants, which was a great spot. Yeah, they all are. What about the floating eye? Not seeing anything there. And you, yeah, you is a floater because of stend. No, not seeing anything. Wow, what am I going to do? Such a bingo rack. Have I considered all floaters? Let me just revisit the ones I've already considered. How about the G? No. O. I've got the ISO prefix. I've got the IN prefix. Poco sign. Don't think that's good. No. Still one blank to come. No S's. Not a massively S friendly board. There are no lanes for seven letter bingos ending in S. Just wondering about using the S for begazes. Still one D to come. Or I could play something like Scop. 
24 points, keeping sign. Let me count the remaining vowels. 11 out of 30, vowel dry, only two E's. This is a really nice rag. What about playing PO down here? And this is creating a new lane in column three. Op takes E and S, U takes an S. And this is a really nice five letter set. 22 points, I'm not sure I'm going to score much more than that. Unless I eat away at this rack leap to the extent that the overall play isn't better than Poe. So I'm reasonably happy with Poe. The only thing better than this would be if there's a bingo I'm missing. And I like this rack leave because I've got the IN for an ING play. I'm going with this. Okay, I have Cerning in columns in row C beginning S C. Don't have a seven. Wow. What about the I and the O? And I did draw two consonants, which reflects the vowel dry bag. So how about the E? No, nope, not seeing anything there. Is this out of my hands now or out of sight? It, it's pretty much is. Opponent leads by nearly 120 and is on turn. I would need a couple of back to back bingos and really for opponent to stutter, and that is extremely unlikely. So I have Cerning. I would have Crannies through an A. None of those available. Really not seeing a seven with this rack. It's Cinerins. Ah, so close. I-N, but then K-S, not good. How about the U? Scunnier, not good. And I'm not thinking of an anagram. So, what is opponent going to do? And what am I going to do if opponent blocks Cerning? This is a really tricky rack to, to play through. And it's getting close to the point where I should be looking to minimise the losing spread rather than opening up bingo lanes quite often you can feel desperate open up bingo lanes and you're just giving easy scoring opportunities for opponent to increase their their winning margin opponent taking a little while with this move compared to his earlier ones which were lightning fast now i've considered the g what about the o Not seeing anything with that. Oh, nice play by opponent, just eight points and takes out my, my bingo. So, well, that is a nice play, 19 tiles to come. I've still got column three for an, a play ending E and S. Yeah, and this V has also taken out the O as a floater. Just, well, there's a blank to come. I was wondering about making a play in column 15, which stops one square short of the triple word square, but I'm not seeing a way of doing that. S-I-N is the obvious play, but that takes more than an S. So really, I'm looking to play off the N, possibly the C. Just looking at H, A and A. Because the C can go in front of this, the H, but I'm not seeing anything there. Uh, 
I have crines as a sixth, but I don't think it's optimal to wreck this rack. Is incense a good? I don't think it is, but it may be. And it is unbelievable. I, I thought that may have ended OR. Wow. I had originally been looking at that E with a view to putting my S on the end of OM. But wow. Okay, so I trail by 50 and I've got good scoring tiles in the J and the X. Good grief. That took me an, an eternity to find. So, is there hope? Any, well, I'm not seeing any big spots for either of my scoring tiles. But I must be able to score something with them. I don't have to play them in one go. 30 for opponent, that's nice. So, what to do? I have J and X. There are nine tiles in the bag. Seven vowels out of 16. The D and the S's have gone. There's still a blank to come. That could be significant. So I do have Ox up here for 38 points. 360. I would trail by 46. I'd be keeping good vowels. Scoring tiles. So I may have a play in column 3. J and W don't go great together. Four minutes on my clock, but only nine tiles in the bag. So I do have some time. So I was thinking about OX. What else do I have? The W isn't a great tile with the J, even though Jow, Jaw and Ju are all good. Is Ox the play? It doesn't give very much away. No N's or S's to go underneath I-O. I think if I'm going to have any hope of winning in this game, I need to keep scoring. Ah, X-E-D is good. So, I have Axe for 42. Which isn't quite as good as the rack leave after ox, but it's more points. Four more points. So this is 42 points, 364. Trail by 42. Interesting. But there are A's to come and E's, all of which go above the X. And a T can go above Aha. Uh -huh. So I think I'm going to go back to, to Ox for 38. And I draw another scoring tile in the F. Maybe opponent's got two U's and a W. Now I hadn't identified anywhere great for the J, I do have Jeff A in column three. Where else can the J play? J A S not good, nor is J E D. Hatch is good, but no vowels go after Ed. Do I have anything through the S? No. Seven tiles in the bag. Oof is good. Okay, but I can't see anything better than just EF in that spot. F is good. But I can't see any F plays which use the F, which use the W or the J. I have Raj in column 8. Interesting. 30 for opponent. Three tiles left, so 
This is 30 points. Wow. Would opponent have played Abri if he had two U's and a W? No, he would not, I don't think. Or he could if he was simply set on outrunning with the bigger score each turn. Draw are not good, otherwise that would play in column three. I do have fewer in column three. I'm not going to bingo with this rack leave. 30 points is good. What would Jeff A score? 33. Wow. Where are those U's and W's? I'm just not going to bingo with this rap. One minute on my clock. Let me just put this back. Is there really nowhere to get rid of J and W? Nothing around what opponent's just done with Abri. Nothing through the S. What about Wafer? 33 points, keeping J, E. I don't think that's better. I'm running out of time. I'm going with Raj. Wow, I dodged the two U's. But I draw another W. So I still have fewer in column three. Opponents only got the P for score. I trail by 46, but I think I am too far behind. Ah, did I miss the V for my J? Did I have Java last turn? Okay, I have Wave this turn, which is a 30-point play. So I have two 30-point plays. So I should be able to manage the losing spread to a fairly small amount. Which is what you want to achieve in tournaments. It's the accumulation of big losing spreads, which can massively cost you places. But if, if every game you lose, you're only losing by a small margin, it helps to keep you towards the top of the number of people who are on the same number of wins. So it's wafer and fewer in column three, and it's wave in column eight. And I'm not seeing anything else. And what's the last tile in the bag? Probably the U. Could be the blank. Now, there must be more options than the two I've considered. And does opponent have a bingo through the A I've just provided? It's possible. If you imagine the U being in the bag, then opponent's got quite a nice seven letter set. But if he does bingo, he does draw that final tile. So I will get the opportunity of getting at least 30 points. Great. Opponent doesn't have a bingo. He has taken out the wafer spot. He's left alone the wave spot. 45 seconds on my clock. And opponent is going out with RU blank, so this is my last turn. Is this the best I can do? I'm only burning one of my high scoring tiles. So is there anywhere for WAW? No, I don't think so. I'm going with this. And I trail by only 30 points, but opponent's on turn, so that's going to get a little bigger, and he's going to get 20 points on count back. Nothing goes in front of uplit. And there we go. And the final score, 423 for me, 
492 for opponent, a winning margin of 69 points. So well done to opponent. Let's see what I missed. Wow, what an interesting game. Both of us over 400, but opponent scoring more. So it was opponent to go first. Nice play of Bavin. This was my rack and I play Hay, which looks best. Opponent gets 40 for the Q. And now I have all these vowels. Interesting, I play OG with a Y front hook. I could have played, well, a G takes an R front hook. So I think OG is better. But I'm surprised there aren't more alternatives here. Higher score, only 16 points. Opponent's rack plays Fig. And H4, Big A's, that was my play. And I like it. Great bingo by opponent, d Let's not an easy one to spot. And here we go, I trail by nearly 100 and this rack looked good. No missed bingo. I played Cooley for 39 and that was the most available and Cooley is better than Coley because ET is a better rack leave than OT. Opponent's rack, nice play of head for 50 points. And here we go. Taylor on was the only bingo, but 8F, where's that? Beginning with 10, I could have played six letters and played Tenderloin, which would have been a really fancy play, but not as good as the bingo. Great rack for opponent, bingos with pig outs, and I'm still trailing by over 100. And I play Pokia for 42, which looks fine. And look at this for a seven letter pick, mutant straight out of the bag and a good spot by opponent. The, rap, the letters themselves don't look that promising. Now, by way of contrast, this rack does look promising, but is there a bingo? No, there isn't, few. But N2, there was Pisco and Begazes for 40 odd points. And I play Poe for 20. So this is a very interesting comparison. So I'm giving up 19 points of score and setting aside the fact that Pisco gives opponents access to the bottom row on a purely score and rack leave basis, which is your starting point for, an for analysing most candidate plays. How does Poe compare to Pisco? And in particular, does the rack leave after Poe of C-E-I-N-S is that 19 points better than EN? Well, EN is, they're both good tiles, so that's going to be somewhere between naught and plus five points. But CEINS, S is worth eight to 10. Every single tile helps that. So CEINS, I would say, is must be around the 20 point mark. And 20 points compared to 5 is 15. So I think those plays are reasonably close purely on score and rack leave. And when you then take into account providing opponent access to Roo, I think Poe is a better play. And has opponent just drawn Vitrium? That may end EUM rather than IUM, but it looks jolly close to a bingo. He would have Triumvir through an R. Fortunately, he has no bingos. Oh, but chooses to block mine. Well, to block the one that I'd seen, but fortunately, after only 10 minutes, I managed to spot the alternative bingo of Incensor. And I'm back in the game, just 50 points behind. Opponent plays Mind. And this gave me hope. I had the J and the X, and the blank was unseen. Wow, C13, where's that? Wow, getting the X doubled and burning the W and getting the play doubled. Rewax for 52, retaining J and O. That would have been interesting. That would have taken me to 374, trailing by 32. I would have still been a massive unfavourite to win, but I think that play would have been better than, than OX for 38. Okay, so I, I dropped 14, but I think the W and the J go badly together. Now, opponent has one U out of UWW when 
he plays a brie. And I trail by 76 with three in the bag. Okay, so I didn't have Java. I didn't have two, two A's. Could have played Fave, but bear in mind three tiles in the bag. So there is an advantage in playing off just two tiles, which Raj achieves and scores almost as much. Now, opponent has both U's and the blank, so it's the W in the bag. It's not the W in the bag, they're both on my rack at this point. So no bingo for opponent, fortunately for me. Opponent plays uplit. So he plays uplit and retains UR blank. The R was the last in the bag. My rack. Yeah, I play wave and I think that's fine. And then opponent goes out. So what a game. Absolutely tremendous play by opponent. An absolute powerhouse of bingos from him. Not on the first move, but in the middle of the game, d leds pig outs and mutants gave him a lead and I was always struggling to keep up. So absolutely cracking game by opponent. And also I basically managed to hang on to his coattails and possibly if I'd got rewax, I would have gotten a little bit closer. Now, what's happened this week is a few days ago, the subscriber count for the channel went above 1000, which is a fantastic landmark to hit and one which I thought for a long time I wasn't going to achieve. But there's been a, a recent surge in subscribers, I think partly prompted by the crossword videos on Saturday night. And I know some people like Scrabble, don't like crosswords and vice versa, but there are also people who like both. But I have videos to cater for for all tastes, and that seems to have added to the interest in the channel. And it was absolutely fantastic news just before midnight on Tuesday last week when the subscriber count went through a thousand. So thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel. And thank you also to everyone who's subscribed at any earlier point. And I know some of you have been loyal followers of the channel since its very early days. So, and thank you also to the Patreons of the channel whose contributions on Patreon help to keep the channel alive. Very much appreciated. And there are bonus videos every month for you on the Patreon site. And while we're talking about Patreon, I should mention that a couple of weeks ago or last week, I ran a, a vlog of the listener crossword setters dinner at the end of the crossword video. And I included a five second segment from the speech by the guest speaker, Andrew Bremner, who sets fantastic listener crosswords under the pseudonym of Sabre. Now, his actual speech was, was not a few seconds. It was about seven or eight minutes long. And I've put that speech in full on Patreon, and that's available to anybody. So if you go to the Patreon site as linked below, you will be able to see all of that speech if you are interested in, in doing so. So I think that's about everything. Many thanks to opponent for a tremendous battle. I hope you enjoyed watching that game. Like and subscribe and I will see you next time.